Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about how big of a year you're going to have. 2023 is here. It's early. It may be slower where you are. It may be a great time to set up. So if you are in business at all or even looking to get in business, it's going to be a good episode. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Yes, my voice sounds awful. Just got back from IWCA and uh, lost my voice, of course. But if you're here and it's your first time, I promise uh, this episode will not be the worst thing you see all day. Uh, So go back, watch, and listen all the episodes you possibly can. This goes back for five years. There's so much content out there. Uh, It's absolutely ridiculous. So go back, watch it, uh, listen, follow it, all that. Um, Anywhere podcasts are, and of course, where YouTube, uh, you can always watch it in the background. But if you are one of the cool kids, eh? if you're somebody who's watched every episode, of course, you've given me high fives in real life, and you put let me put your orders in, which is a virtual high five, well, thank you. It's because of you that I get to live my lavish lifestyle of hair gel and brand name Band-Aid. So thank you so much for all that. By the way, I don't I don't even remember when this uh, trend started, but uh, every time somebody lets me put orders in, uh, they'll tell me like, oh, now you can get brand name Kool-Aid packets or something, something. It's, it's awesome. But anyway, if you want me to be your rep, which I hope you do, because I want to be your rep, um, that's what I do to make money. It costs you nothing extra, but I get credit for it, right? Uh, 862-312-2026. Now, let me put this out there. You're never bugging me to let me put an order in, ever. I have sometimes people, like, will put their own orders in. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, it was late or fill in the blank and I didn't have you put it. Just text me. Shoot me a text. Call me. Whatever. Uh, I will always be able to get your order in for you, even if it is uh, you text me on you know, eight o'clock at night on a Saturday, it will go in before everything ships out on Monday. So please let me, let me know. I would love the opportunity. Uh, Also, if you didn't know, and you've seen the stickers all over, uh, you've probably heard of the magazine, the American Window Cleaner magazine. I own that magazine also, and it is a awesome pet project. Just so many good things for window cleaners. It's so many good articles. It's just another way to kind of nerd out, get your brain into it, have that coming to your door. It's paper. It shows up every single month. It's uh, kind of exciting. You, it's probably the best thing you'll read on the toilet all month. So go to awcmag.com, get a subscription, and uh, it means the world to me. So, But a couple of sh- quick shout-outs. Uh, I got Sam Poet um, in Bethany, uh, with Bethany in New Jersey. I got Victor D. Bartolo in Pennsylvania. What's up, man? And Greg Hiller in South Carolina. What's up? Uh, I always kind of pick a couple people for... Uh, shout out. So let me put your order in. Maybe you'll get a shout out. Hmm? It's like five seconds of fame. Um, but anyway, today we are talking about, uh, is it going to be a big year? Is 2023 going to be big? Cause it should be. Now, let me start by saying I'm just a dummy with a mic. I just sit in front of, you know, uh, a camera and talk to people. So big doesn't mean size. Big could mean strength. It could be hourly. It could be income. It could be, um, you know, production. It could be a lot of things. It doesn't mean like big as in I'm going to get 20 more employees this year. But maybe that's your goal. Now we've talked goals a whole bunch. I'm here to motivate you today. Hopefully it does something. We have thousands of downloads every single week. And I hope this helps. If it does help you, by the way, shoot me a text and be like, yo, yeah, this is good. Or tell me your plan or any of that stuff. But what we're talking about is, is it going to be a big year? Now, 2023 could have some economic issues. I won't get into that because that's boring. And I also don't want to predict because we've been wrong before, right? But if it's going to be big for you, and I'm a huge person on planning, you know what we're going to talk about. If you have a plan It's only a dream unless it's written down. Unless there's goals to achieve it, it's just a dream. Now, dreams are good, right? Dreams are great. You could dream about having this kind of company. You could dream about this kind of financial security. You could dream about anything. 
But if you don't have the plan in place or the goals, well, it's just a, it's just a dream. Ah, oh, man, I'd love, love to go to California someday. That's a dream. I'm going to California. I typed it in the GPS in 500 feet, turn left. That's a goal. I'll be there. And I'll be there in this amount of hours. Right? So we're kind of talking about that, but I want to kind of open your eyes to some of this stuff. This time of year for most of us, obviously you warmer climate people are uh, in your peak anyway with snowbirds and stuff. But for the most of us, it's a little bit slower right now. All of our planning for this year happens now because guess what? In a couple months or a month, you're not going to have time to do the planning. It's just going to be happening. You're on the raft. You're just riding the roller coaster of uh, craziness. So you have to get the plan in place first. You really do. And there's a few things to really look at with that. The, the first one's your projections. Now, if you have a goal, right? Not a dream, a goal. You have to know what that looks like. If you said, we're going to hit a million dollars this year because that's the sexy number. Well, you put it out there. You could technically build a goal to get there. But depending on where you are in your company, it could be a giant goal. But what's your goal? I want to be 20% bigger. I want to be 50% bigger. I want another $100,000 in gross revenue. Whatever that goal is for you, you need to decide that. Because if I'm going to California, I can't just say going to California. I have to say going to Modesto, California at 123 Fake Street. That's how I get there. You need to know that goal. Now, your goal does not have to line up with anybody else's company anybody else's intentions or anybody else's growth strategies or even their projections. One of the big things that people do that shoot themselves in the foot is they always look at everybody else, which is nice. Look at other people. I know guys that have had million dollar companies by 21. I didn't do that. I know other guys who have been doing this for 20 years and they're making $50,000 a year. That's their goals, not your goals. There's always going to be somebody that does something bigger and better than you. But there's also lots of people who didn't do something bigger and better than you. What you've achieved, you have to be proud of. You have to be proud of what you did to get there. If you're not, 2023 is the year to change that. By this time, 2024, you should be proud of what you did in 23. The only way to do that is the entire year, the entire set of goals. Did you hit it? Did you make it? Did you push it? Did you sweat? Did you get it? If you're in a growth period, you have to push it. That's growth. Growth is super active. It's super frustrating. It's super uh, stress relating. It's, it's just, it's, it's hard. But if you're in a growth period, you have to do that. If you are, know where you're going. What's your projections? Now, I don't do homework in this usually too much, every now and then. But here's something for you to do. You're probably listening to this out if you're working. Sweet, awesome, you're not going to do this now. But hopefully this sticks with you. But at some point, tonight, tomorrow, soon, at some point, I want you to see what you did last year, gross, and what you're going to do this year. What's your growth? Literally put it out there. Just growing isn't good. Inflation was 9%. If your company grows 9%, you just broke even. Right? If you have a plan for growth, what is that growth? You don't need to tell me. If you want to, text me. Tell me your percentage that you need to grow. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to help you be motivated to do it. But it's just for you. What's your growth? Now, even numbers, you made $100,000 last year. This year you said, dude, I want to do 125. That's a big grow. That's 25% growth on top of it, right? That means you're doing 125% next year. Totally doable. And it's a great number. But how do you get there? 
That's the part. That number is the first start. That is the address of where you're going. Now it's time to take that address, put it into a GPS and figure it out. Say you have 330 days left of the month when you're listening to this, whatever. Okay, let's put that out in the growth numbers. What do I need to achieve to get that from here on out? Right? Once you create the, the purpose, the goal, then you can figure out how to get there. But if you're just like, I want to grow, that's, that's bad, bad business. And there's, you don't have to have a great business, right? You have a good business. You're listening to a podcast about your business, right? You care. But there's people out there who don't. And it's nothing bad that they just kind of hang out. Maybe they're in a coast period. Maybe they just don't really care. If they're not actively doing or being awesome, they're not going to be bigger or stronger. Not on purpose. They just jumped on a, the back of a bull and, hmm? Where's the bull going to end up? Hmm? But hopefully I could stick with it. That's, that's, that's just getting on. If you plan it, you get to watch where it goes. So your 25% growth, say, maybe you want to double your company, whatever that is. What does your staffing look to get there? Now, we're taking this goal and we're figuring out all of the plans. If I want to go to California, I need to know, I need to at least enough gas or money to buy gas three times or four times or whatever it is, depending on what vehicle. If you're driving my vehicle, it's probably... Uh, 30 times you have to stop for gas. But you need to know how many employees this is. Okay, last year we did a gross of XYZ and we had X amount of employees. How many employees do you need now? Okay, if you need more employees, when do you hire those employees? When do you bring them on board? Once you need them, well, then it's too late. So then you bring them on soon. See, we're planning on how to get there, right? Just so you know, I'm going to California. There's construction on this road. I'm going to avoid that road, right? Or this road's brand new. It's giant, super smooth, great to drive on. I want to go that way. And I'm going to California. I'm planning to go to that road. Where does that staffing take you? Okay, I'm planning on adding another person. Okay? If you're planning to add another person, what does that look like? What, is, what comes with that person, right? How are they getting hired? Where are you finding them? How are you paying them? Where does that come from? Are they, you know, trucked and, uh, you know, uh, geared and everything else? You have to know because you're planning this stuff. If you just were like, hey, like, cool, like, I don't know, we're going to grow. Well, we should probably get more people. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely need somebody. Well, you're not going to plan to get those people. You're just going to hopefully get them. What's your staffing situation? If you need staff, you then need to hire. If you're going to add $25,000, how are you going to get that? Oh, we're just going to work hard. Wrong. That's the wrong answer. That's a fake answer. That's as fake as you saying, I'm going to hit a million dollars as your fake number. You didn't do any research if you're hitting a million dollars. Not one person ever has grossed one million dollars to the penny right? So how are you going to get there? What do your ads look like? What's your marketing calendar look like? If I need to add an extra $25,000, I need to know that I need to spend another five to $8,000 worth of advertising to get that, depending on your ROI. You should be starting to know all that. Okay, where does that extra $5,000 for Facebook ads come from? When do I start advertising for that? And do I have the staff to do that? You see, once you have the destination, you can figure all that out. These are the little pieces that find out if you're ready to be bigger, if you're ready to grow. It's a hard conversation because a lot of us, it's like, yeah, we're just kind of like hanging out. You know, there's like a lot of times we just want to sit back and relax, man. It's going to get crazy. I'm just, but if you're in a growth period, your mind has to be active with that. That's the hardest part about business, your mind. Okay, staffing, what does it look like? Marketing calendar, what are we doing? What are we adding? What does it look like? What are we going to do this year? Everybody says, hey, I'm going to do EDDM. Okay, cool. You better have a good template, hopefully from WCR. Don't make a template yourself. I'm going to go do uh, Facebook ads. 
Okay. What does the ad look like? Do you have an ad manager? Do you have an idea of how many you're going to do? What is your budget per day? All that. How many times are you going to be actively changing it? If you're going to run Facebook ads, that's awesome. But your ad should be changing every couple of days. It has to be being tested. If you're going to say, okay, I want six months of Facebook ads I'm going to put out there during the center of the year. Awesome. How much are you spending every day? Well, I have a budget of $5,000. Okay, divide $5,000 times your six months times 30. What does that look like? How much are you spending? How much connections are you making? Does it even make sense? Are you going to have lots of connections? If you're actively changing it, you can find out what you're going to do. Now, here's the other side. If you said, hey, I have $5,000. I'm going to put towards ads. I'm going to hit $25,000 new money in gross this year. You start doing Facebook ads and they are just blowing the doors off your company. Well, now it's investing. I'm not sitting aside making sure I have $5,000. I Every time I spend $20, I'm making $1,000. Well, I'm just going to keep spending and spending and spending and spending and spending and spending. And maybe my growth goal is more because I found it. Then you have to figure out, okay, well, I'm changing my growth goal because everything's doing so well. Now, how many people do I need? All that stuff. You could change this, this growth goal. It's not set in stone. Everybody's always like, well, my one year, my two year, and my five year plan is. And people go, I don't want to do a five year plan. I don't know where I'm going to. Of course you don't. But again, you know you're going to 123 Fake Street in California, Modesto, California. There's a lot of steps before that. There's one year, two year before that, right? Maybe things change there, right? Maybe you go, okay, it's going to take me this amount of time to get to California, but then all of a sudden you run into a guy who's got a jet and he goes, ah, oh, we can get there faster. Maybe you blow a tire. That takes more time. Maybe you get in a wreck. That guy gets your car fixed. Things happen along the way. It doesn't change your destination. It changes how you're getting there. So what's your marketing calendar look like? Is that up to par? If it's not, plan on how to get there. Right? With new services, are you adding anything on? Christmas lights have been huge, giant. A lot of people this year are adding Christmas lights. If that's in your plan, you should be buying stuff in the next month or two. But then that has to be in the plan worked up that, okay, I'm advertising, that's in my marketing calendar, that's gonna, by itself, I'm gonna do $20,000 there, I'm gonna. If you have new services, where does that play in? Don't figure it out like, well, I don't know, I'm gonna start doing it and see where it goes. No, plan how you're going to do it. New add-ons can really help. Don't be a jack of all trades and a master of none. But new ads, uh, add-ons can really, really help. Maybe this is the year you're doing pressure washing. Maybe you're adding pressure washing. Maybe you're a pressure washer and you're adding window cleaning and that's why you're here. What's up, by the way? Uh, I sell supplies, so if you need window cleaning stuff, let me know. Yeah, shameless plug. Right? Add-ons count, but you have to figure out how that's happening. You've already done business. If you've been in it for a while, even an add-on is just adding a different piece to your business. You understand how that all works. If there's new add-ons, that gets worked into your calendar, your marketing calendar. That's the big thing, right? What are you doing? A big, big, big part of everything too is are you on track? And I'm going to touch more on this, wrapping up that the, the, the episode. But track everything when it comes to this, right? This is the only way you know if you're on track. It's the only way you know if you're really there, if you're, if you're going in the right direction. If you're not reading street signs, you don't know where you really are, right? But here's the big thing. And I always bring this up, and everybody goes, oh, your sales good. Okay. I'm a sales guy, take it with a grain of salt. I've also owned a window cleaning company for 16 years, take it with a grain of salt. But a big piece to the whole puzzle of 2023 is going to be stuff, right? If you're doing EDDM, you need print. 
maybe you need door hangers or marketing or any type of print. Is that done, printed, edited, made? Because when you're really, really busy and you're working 10 hour days, you're not going to go, I'm going to design a post. No. Do you have new gear to get you where you need to go? I know people who have done, they said, hey, I'm going to add $50,000. I had a guy who ended up adding a little over $50,000 in his year because he added water fed. That's all he did. All he did was add water fed cleaning and he made another $50,000 that year. He didn't even bring on another staff person. He just had the people who he did have and everybody worked a little bit more, but he brought water fed. And now everybody's working super a ton more efficiently. They're working faster, taking up, picking up bigger projects. They're not doing lifts. They're coming in more competitively. They're just working faster because of water fed. That's of course what I would say because I love water fed so much and because I sell water fed, right? I get it. I get it. But what if in your plan of growth, efficiency is something? People don't look at that efficiency side. They're like, oh yeah, I'm doing this. I'm going to need more people. What if you just did more? I can't. I'm already working. Okay. What if you just did more smarter? Hypothetical. Hypothetical. You know how I love my analogies. But think about this. What if you work 40 hours a week, every week, and you made $100,000, right? So I, this is, let me rephrase, not $100,000. Let's say you made $50, $50 uh, an hour. That's what you were making in production. 40 hours a week, great. But what if you increased everybody's price and they all said yes? Now, we know that not everybody's going to say yes and you can't increase it, but just let's say. Now you make $100 an hour. Well, if you make $100 an hour, 40 hours a week, you didn't do anything extra. You just charged them more. You made more. You doubled your income. Doubled it. Now that's a drastic, I get it. I get that that's drastic, but use that in your brain. That's efficiencies. What if I can make more per hour? What if I do get into water fed? Or I do get that new piece of equipment? Or I do fill in the blank? What if I get a stiffer pole so I can work faster? What if I get a higher flow system so I, I scrub better? What if I get um, a better sleeve for my tools, I can scrub it a bit faster. What if I use a walnut attachment on a pole so now I don't have to spend so much time? If you can speed up your efficiencies, you make more per hour. You don't work more, but you make more. Everybody's got lacking spots in their efficiencies. There's always times where you're like, oh, I kind of wasted that fill in the blank. Or that took me too long. What if you made that better? That's where new gear comes in, right? What about trucks? If you're bringing in new people, do they have trucks? Okay, I gotta hire two more people this year, okay? Well, you can't take two people and add them into an existing crew, it just doesn't happen. That means it's their own truck. Okay, no problem, I'll buy a truck. Okay, but then you need to have it lettered. Okay, I'll buy a truck and get it lettered. Okay, but now you have all that, but you also need to have bins. Are you gonna be uniform? Are all your trucks looking the exact same with the exact same everything? Yes. Okay, well then you need to buy the cap for that truck. Okay, I gotta buy the truck the cap and get it final yep now what goes in the truck well you got two more techs you need two starter kits and traditional stuff i want to have a water fit on the truck there's two guys i want to have this just that's what it looks like to add two guys to add two guys to your crew could be an investment of for the year fifteen thousand dollars that could be truck payments insurance payments that could be new gear, getting them set up. Maybe those new guys you're hiring, you don't have clothes yet, so you got to get apparel. What does all of that look like? You have to plan all of that to get it. I'm big on the equipment. This is a really busy time for us now because everybody's planning, getting everything ready for the year. The worst thing that I find, which is it happens every year and it happens a lot, so it's not, this is, might be you and it's not a, a dig. But the sad thing is, is that a lot of people wait until it's needed or until like, hey, I'm so busy. I need this now. Can you ship it tomorrow? I don't know how many people don't have water fed, get into water fed and then spend four or five hundred dollars to get it shipped to them the next day. 
How much did that one job cost that you wanted to get it for? Yeah, it made it easier and faster, but you just absorbed all of that because you didn't plan. That part always hurts, but I get it. It is what it is. Plan all of this stuff. It's cheaper to plan than to not plan. And then what happens when you call and go, I need this for tomorrow, and then we go, oh, sorry, we're out of stock right now because it's going crazy. Well, what am I supposed to do? Plan. You're, you're supposed to take a time machine back two months and plan, and everything would have been perfect. I feel bad for it, but you know it's going to happen, right? So know all of the things that you need, right? So now you got what you're doing, where you're going, how much you're making, how you're getting there, but you need to track it to know where you are. Here's, a, here's a, another dumb analogy. If you want to eat a cow, you can do that. You can't eat an entire cow going uh, and just eating the whole cow. But if you ate one bite at a time, you could eat the cow. It just would take you a long time. And hopefully somebody slaughtered the cow first. But anyway... I'm guaranteeing that if you're a beef eater, you've probably eaten about a cow's worth of meat by the time you're, you know, 50 throughout your life. But it took you 50 years to do it. But you can do it because it's a little piece. Take that goal and no matter how much it is, I'm going to do $100,000. If that's your goal, what does that look like divided by 365? Just for the quick math, that's how much more... How much extra you need to be doing every single day. And if you miss it one day, Sunday, now you double that on that next Monday. Now, in the realm of things, if you're as numbers nerd as me, I have the percentage of the year for the month. So January is, say, 12% of the entire year's growth, but March or April uh, is 28% of the entire year. It's broken down to the uh, hundredth of a percentage. Not because I'm that anal, it's just because that's how I worded it. Then, I know, to make this, I need to make this every single day. If I don't, I am off track for that day. There's holidays. There's 4th of July. There's Memorial Day. There's Sundays. There's days that you are not going to work. What does that look like? If you track that to a specific time, you know how much more you need to make every day. You can tell yourself when you're off track instantly. All it takes is 24 hours. You can figure out if you're on track or off track. If you're ahead, like, oh man, we've done, you know, already all this extra growth that we needed to do on top of everything. We've done that already. Like we're ahead of it. Sweet. Don't slow down because you're going to absorb that eventually. That's awesome. You have to track it though. Every day works into every week, works into every month, works into every year. What that means is if I need to do an extra $10 a day, that's $70 a week. I need to do $70 a week. Now, again, there's not four weeks in every year. You know how that goes. There's 52 weeks. But I need to do $70 times 52 weeks. $70 every week for 52 weeks. You know, I didn't plan for this, so now I have to do math. $3,600. So I need $3,640 for the year, right? But out of four weeks, now I can divide that. 70 I need $280 in new revenue every single month, hypothetically, without the extra weeks. So if I go an entire month and I am not $240 higher than I was this month last year, you're behind schedule. This is the interesting part. You can really, really, really tailor it and figure out where you are. It's hard to do. That's why there's people whose entire job is to track that. But that's how you know if you're on track. If you really want to get to where you're going, you need to know where you're going to go. Track it. I'm telling you. Spend some time. Build a spreadsheet. They're insane to see numbers just in front of you. It's a clear picture. Do it. Do it. And buy some gear. <laughs> put, let me put your orders in. Um, my number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone too. So if this content was good, text me and say, yo, I liked it. 
If you have ideas for other shows, let me know. I speak about things that I think are happening right now and about people that are talking to me. But there's a lot of people out there who don't talk to me all the time and I don't know what you're thinking. So whatever your content is, let me know. Shoot me a text. Let me put your orders in and get a subscription to the American Window Cleaner magazine because it's absolutely amazing and you're amazing. Go to awcmag.com and get the subscription. Plan your year. It's uh, daunting the first time you do it. It's daunting every year. My first week of my year now, and I do sales. I don't even, I plan my sales. The tough part is that first week of getting everything and going through all the numbers to break everything down. It's a lot, but it's so absolutely worth it. So go do that. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.